Hello and welcome everyone to another Jibe review where I will be reviewing your guys' Jibe that you sent in to me and then also we're gonna be looking at my own Jibe and maybe compare a little bit and I hope you're gonna learn a lot. Surprisingly, we had a lot of really good Jibes this time. So we are going to start with the first Jibe from Luca. That's Fuerteventura, I think. He's going with free race gear. Nice uh, light calf here, opening the sail, smooth shift smooth uh, feet switch as well um, and going back into the foot straps carving away so overall a really good jibe um, you are not entering the jibe with a lot of speed to start off with you're already going into the jibe relatively slow and therefore you're carrying not a lot of speed through the jibe but you're keeping your speed quite well one key that you're doing very well is when you take your back foot out of the strap your hip is quite outside so you, the moment you take out your back foot, you're taking the hip outboard. That will help you to control the board because what happens to a lot of people, you take the foot out and you kind of get lifted up to the front. You lose all your control, you lose all your speed. The board starts doing funny movements. That's what you prevent with bringing the hip outside and you're doing that quite well here. The moment you take the foot out, not a lot happens with your board. It stays quite smooth and that way you, you keep all your speed going into the jibe. So this is a very common problem and in fact the other day in Tarifa I met someone who had a similar problem. We randomly met each other at the beach and I wanted to look at a couple of jibes of him and that's what that looked like. I'm here as always on the beautiful beach of Tarifa with Johan. Hi. Johan is here on holiday, right? Right, yeah. And you're training windsurfing like nothing else. <laughs> I'm giving my best, yeah. To take a look at that, I have no idea what your status quo is <laughs> and how you jibe. So I'm going to take a look how that looks and then give you a few tips and tricks and yeah, yeah. see how far we can get. How long have you been windsurfing for? I started in 2021. So you started recently? Quite recently, yeah. yeah. What's the gear you're using? It's a 6.2 freeride sail from Neil Pride. A 110 liter slalom board from Patrick. A few words about the conditions we have. I would say around 15 to maybe 18 knots. Quite wavy. So waves are not ideal for learning to jibe. So better of course uh, in flat water, but I think we don't want to complain about the conditions today. I would say good luck. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Johan struggling to keep up with. Drifted downwind quite far. The walk of shame. When taking your back foot out of the foot strap, right. you lose uh, a lot of control and you also lose speed. Okay. And when you take out that back foot out of the foot strap, you're very upright. Bring your ass a bit out, yeah, outside the, the board, hips, behind. Hips outward, right? Exactly. Yeah. Bring your hips low. Because you're very upright before, and over the board. Before I get the foot out or during or after? Uh, the, basically the moment you get it out or let's say a second before. Then what you'll do is you're going to close the sail straight away. Okay. Because what you now do is like you're upright, you keep it relatively open and you start closing it towards the end okay. of the carve. But you basically want to... Uh, close the sail right away. So while Johan is working on improving his jibe, we're gonna be looking at the next jibe from Luca. Interestingly enough, this one is on different gear. Also in this one, a very nice smooth, smooth and constant carve, nice shifting of the sail. Uh, and off he goes. Yeah, really not a lot. I would say you can do better here. Of course, you can always carve harder and you can always yeah, make it uh, turn a bit more extreme if that's what you're looking for. Here you could start to lean in a little bit more but also look at his front arm the front arm is stretched the the back arm is bent and uh, overall a good jibe so next we're looking at a duck jibe from jonas this one we're looking at right now is uh, the little bit better one it's uh, fully planing so that's already quite good um, but i would say we're gonna look at the one that he doesn't make planing he's coming into the beach going downwind bending his knees 
nice shifting of the sail and then carves a little bit hard at the exit. So we don't have a lot of footage here in the end. His knees are bent, look at his posture. So he's really low in the hip, which gives him control. I would say if you can, you can grab a little bit further behind at the boom. And uh, then it's gonna allow you to throw the rig around a bit further and you can possibly save uh, the grab that you're doing here because this is uh, where it can go wrong a little bit if it gets windier. Then the moment he switches the feet, you can see that he's a bit across and that's where, where uh, it kind of goes wrong. He's not really going uh, heel to heel, that way the board wouldn't carve as hard into the wind and uh, he would be able to continue a much sm more smooth radius and, and finish his duck jive planing. Next up, we're gonna be looking at Scott. Scott is blasting with race gear. He's shooting downwind, taking the foot out, carving hard, bringing the sail quite low, shifting the sail, switching the feet, and off he goes, fully planing. So that is already quite an advanced uh, jibe. He has a sail number, so I assume he does races and obviously for that reason wants to do a racing jibe. You're already doing a good job in keeping the speed um, right until the point where you carve into the jibe. So you're carrying a lot of speed into the jibe. For a, a pure racing jibe, you're bringing the sail quite far to the back. It looks really nice and you have a lot of spray here. It's really gonna limit you in being able to adapt your radius in a race. Right in this moment here, there's not a lot you can do and you can also see that only the tail of the board is in the water. You want the whole rail to grab the water and, and give you that, um, that grip that kind of guides you like a rail through the turn. Um, you're doing that very well in the beginning here, but because you're doing it so extreme, you're kind of backing out a little bit towards the middle of the jibe and then you carve a bit harder again. So it's very, the turn is a little bit inconsistent, but of course, very good jibe, looks super cool and uh, yeah, keep practicing. Obviously, jiving on racing gear is always a bit more tricky. Scott seems to have already quite some experience, but especially when you when you start out to learning the jibe and to learn the basic sequences of the jibe, it's very helpful to do it with a free ride board, a board that allows you to glide at all times. It really has a lot of glide. We're gonna be looking at a jibe with me on a, let's say more free racy gear. I'm on a V8 here with a super light wind board of JP. So it's actually a really big board. And I thought that might be interesting for you guys to see as well, because um, obviously some of you are using bigger boards. And that's what I've been saying is you need a wide board or you need a board that gives you a lot of planning power in the beginning so you have more time to figure out what you need to do with your legs because obviously i can tell you what to do here but in the end you're gonna have to practice it and you're gonna do it wrong uh, plenty of times i'm switching my hands from grabbing from below to going on top i'm not hooked into the harness lines my hip is super far outboard while I bring the back leg out of the foot strap and onto the other side of the board and here I'm carving in I always want to look where I go that's very important it's gonna help you a lot to look where you go because usually your whole body follows where you look here you can also see that because I don't know this board as I do my slalom boards you can see that I'm adjusting my feet a little bit here and there to find the right position and uh, because the board is big it allows me to do that I have a little bit of extra margin for error here. You know already about the boom, close to the mast, rotate, and then uh, I'm sort of harnessing the power by stretching the front leg, being bent in the, with the back leg and bringing my, my hip out again. With the slalom gear, when you do a jibe and you do the slightest mistake, the jibe is done right away and you crash. So you're gonna spend so much more time in the water, water starting, struggling with the jibe, and you're gonna lose a lot of time that you could be on the water practicing jibes. And that's exactly what happened with uh, Johan and Tarifa.
Well, it seems like it's not that windy out there, is it? No, it seems uh, relatively much because it's onshore, but 6-2 was not the right choice. However, you're still proving a point that I often tell to people, which is try when you learn something or you're practicing something, try to set up everything perfectly around you. Yeah. Meaning try to look for the easiest spot possible. If you have the wrong gear, go and make the effort to take the right gear and, and make the change because it's going to make it so much easier for you to learn something. Absolutely. Now, now you spend out there probably, I don't know, at least 30 minutes yeah. and you made one jive. And if you're on the right sail in 30 minutes, you're going to make five to 10 jives. But yeah. the tip I would give you is uh, obviously to take more speed into the jive. You carved <laughs> in nicely, obviously. You open the sail a bit too late. Okay. So you can open it a bit earlier already. Right. Um, but uh, the main thing is just take more speed into the jive and for that obviously you, you need more wind. You struggle to stay upwind and when that's already in the back of your head like ah damn I'm, I'm gonna have to go back upwind yeah. then you're never gonna set up properly for the Sometimes jive. Sometimes I had to wait for a gust to get even water started. I guess it's not meant to be today. <laughs> no not really. We're gonna call it a day but maybe so sometime in the future you can send me a video of your jibe and in the next jibe review yeah absolutely we'll see what your progress is <laughs> that could be interesting uh, and i would say with that back to the studio we have another jiber with free race or with race equipment actually shifting the hand that's a good thing he's going downwind with a gust here taking the foot out there's not a lot we see with the board going on here but what we can look at really well is the movements of the hands and that's looks overall pretty well what you want to do is if you struggle to carve hard into the jibe to bring the backhand a little bit further back it's going to give you more leverage and it's going to motivate you more to commit to to the turn because even if you just pull the hand a little bit you automatically will be enticed to commit to the turn which is uh, something he could have definitely done here and uh, it would help him as well but then coming to the shifting part you can see really well how he slides the front hand close to the boom and that's really the key the distance between your hands in this exact moment you want to be as small as possible because you can imagine it's quite an awkward position right to be across with your hands so the further you have them apart the harder it's gonna be. And on the new side, he's also grabbing the boom very close to the mast. And from here, you have to slide it back into the position you want it to be, which here he does. I believe he could even slide the front hand a little bit further back. It's gonna open the sail in the front more. You can see here that he's getting pulled a little bit into the wind and he's trying to bring the sail forward so he stays downwind which is a good movement but if you have the hand a bit further back it's gonna happen a bit more automatically and maybe one of you guys is spotting a mistake that i'm overseeing here so please help each other out in the comments let us know if you see something that you think some of the guys here might be doing wrong i'd be really yeah curious to see if you can find something and also let us know how your jibes are going while we are looking into the next jibe timo is uh, definitely stacked on his sail yeah shooting on a reach then going downwind slightly carving in front arm is stretched smooth carve throughout Continuing on the downwind course, this is really good. Keeping a lot of speed. We're having a lot of good jibes today. Maybe they have been improving over the years, also with the help of these videos. I can definitely see the level of the subscribers and viewers rise, which uh, I think is a good thing. You can still bring your hip a little bit further out. Very good what you're doing here, definitely. But um, it's also a flat spot, so as soon as you have a bit more chop, um, you're gonna struggle a bit more very nice carving here of course you can always carve a bit harder and go for the little bit more extreme jibe but there's nothing wrong with your jibe what you're doing here you're carving throughout you're doing a nice carve you're sliding your front hand close to the boom and you can see that he stops his carve the key to this is you can see how stretched his front leg is so his back leg is uh, has a lot of angle and his front leg is really stretched in, in this moment. You will also see it in my jibes. I almost always have the front leg super stretched at the exit of the jibe. We're gonna be looking at my jibe, but before we look at it, I wanna say a big thanks to all the members who are already yeah enjoying all the PDF tutorials that we have on the members page. The, the link to that is down below. And also don't forget, we have the giveaways for April still running. You can still win. Every subscriber can actually win 
the Defi Wind Experience by Surf Center with uh, Jordi Wonk and I will be there too at the Defi Wind. Uh, one of you guys will join us for yeah the biggest race in the world and you can win that by just subscribing, commenting and leaving your email address in the link below. And then also all of the members have the chance to win one week of gear rental in the TWS Windsurf Center in Tenerife. It's uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty exciting month in terms of giveaways. I would say we're gonna look into my power jipe in South Africa during the near pride shoot. The drone following me, I'm going downwind, carving in over the chop. You see there's quite some chop going on here. Not very big, but very short chop. I'm taking the foot out of the back strap. And um, for me, that might be a little bit different than for you guys, because obviously I gave you the advice to bring your hip out. Here my hip is still out, but what I'm doing is I go straight into the jibe after I take my back foot out of the strap. So there's really not a lot of buffering time in between, which I don't need because I sort of have the control over the gear. So I'm going out of the strap, which pulls me up already, but I'm using that pull to go straight into the jibe. I'm carving in, I'm, I always try to stay close to the sail because that's what gives me control to adapt my radius and, and to yeah be quick with the sail in, in terms of reactions. Of course, I could lay down the sail a bit more here by, by stretching the arms and bringing the sail close, close to the water, but uh, I prefer, let's say, the real racing jibe where you can um, quickly make adjustments. You see my, my legs are bent. I'm suspending the chop. I'm sort of using the carf to push the sail and the back open, which is what I'm doing right here. I'm still carving, still carving switching the feet during the carve even so i'm not stopping to carve that's uh, let's say a little bit more advanced positioning my feet my feet you see my front hand goes really close to the mast here i'm rotating but you can see that my hands are already back in their their final position front leg is extremely stretched back leg is bent and that allows me to get control of the power i get in the sail on the new side and off i go so yeah of course the key is to just practice 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 really visualize all like the tips and tricks i give you you have to think about them you have to imagine yourself doing it look where you go grab close to the mast when you do the the switch of the sail stretch your front leg on the new side all these little bits and pieces of course the gear plays a role but the uh, gear should never be an excuse but of course if you do need that advice to get gear that um, allows you to pro progress faster you can always reach out to us at surf center um, that's obviously the surf shop that i co-own um, we have really competent people that uh, know what gear will help you to advance faster i would say that's the drive review for this time let me know what you guys think. Uh, did you think it was helpful? Leave us a thumbs up below. Don't forget about the giveaways. And yeah, my season is starting very soon. So I would say I see you in the next video, wherever that will be. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in.